Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Coimbra, which is the bee's knees. This is a phenomenal worker placement Euro style game. Absolutely adore it, you know, because it does so many things so well. My favorite board game mechanism of all time is dice drafting, and that's, of course, the uh, thing that drives it. But the fact that these are multi-use dice, that their number indicates the speed and cost with which you can recruit various people, and the color indicates what kind of income you're going to get means that's a tough series of decisions every round because you're going to get three of them and then put them in these awesome little... Uh, keeps that you put them in. That's just a nice little touch. The production value of this game is great. I'll come back to that in a second. But anyway, the dice drafting is so interesting because you can see what your opponent wants. You know what color you want for income. You know how badly you want certain people. And you know how much you have to spend. No matter how bad you want it, if you don't have the money, as you saw in the run-through I just did when I failed to do my uh, computations. And that's the beautiful thing about it. This game gives you so much to grind on in a positive, uh, upbeat, just fun kind of way. Jen and I absolutely adore to tears. Plus, the huge amount of setup variability with the layout of the different monasteries, the the, the fact that the four different factions of the city are going to have different value every time you play, and um, while you will see, every single time you play, you'll see every single potential character in the city. The order that they come out in, uh, whether they're early game or late game, the order, the location they are relative to each other, so that you have to get back to that incredibly tense dice drafting to decide, can I... Do I have to pay through the nose to get this guy? Or if I just let it sit, will it will it still be there when I use this low value die? And then, oh, it just feels so good when you get the one you really want and it costs you nothing. Absolutely great. Plus, the, um, the scaling for players is brilliant. This is some of the best player scaling I have ever seen in a worker placement game. And there are definitely things that could be copied here. The fact that, you know, these progress tracks, which are a really common mainstay, it's so brilliant that... Hey, um, if I work really hard and make my way up to the top, I get the big score. For somebody to come in second place, they have to get close. They have to be within three steps of them. I, it drives me nuts. So many times I have seen Euros where, oh, I, I climbed really high up and I got my 10 points. And then my one opponent, because I'm playing a two-player game with my wife, Jen, she, I'll just move up one step and I'll get five points. You had to work really, I had to work, you know, it drives me nuts. And it's, this is such a brilliant, simple little system to make these tracks much more competitive, much more intense, and it has the same flavor as a higher player count game. So smart. And then these dummy dice are so smart as well as just a very simple threat. Okay, I know what they're going to do. Um, so do I have to beat them? Because, you know, they're very, very easy to anticipate. Your opponents, you can't always tell what they're going for. Although, based on what their special powers are, based on what voyages they've locked in for themselves, you can have a pretty good idea if you really pay attention to what's important to them and what they might be going for. So you can, again, make those informed decisions of, maybe I'll get the perfect guy and I'll only have to pay one guard or whatever. Love it. <laughs> you know, absolutely cool. And then, to get back... I think this is really, really important. To get back to um, the uh, production, the overall quality of the presentation of the game, thank you, um, Egertspiele, for realizing a dry, dusty Euro doesn't have to look dry and dusty. I love this character art. Um, you know, I, I imagine years ago when people were playing Kalis for the first time with that grim, dour guy on the cover and just like, you know, kind of a blah, um, you know, uh, shades of brown presentation. This is a wonderful, riotous explosion of color um, with cute, uh, you know, you know, very evocative and you know, really unique characters. Everything looks great. The iconography is very smartly done, so you really don't have to refer to the rules too terribly often to look things up once you get some basics down of the iconographic language they've got here. Um, oh man. This is great! This is just so, so good! This is some of the most fun worker placement we've had in quite a while. I absolutely adore it. I do have one complaint, though. And it just drives me nuts. It's just a dumb little thing. I appreciate that the developers took the time for the voyages to actually put in text, in words, where all these locations are around the world. I mean, some people maybe don't care, you know, but for me and Jen, we are always looking for more theme in our Euros and always looking. And so when I, you know, we don't just say, oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest in this. We say, I'm going to invest in the uh, expedition to Brazil because it just instantly feels more evocative. I think that's great. It's good that they used a little bit of text to do that. I hate the fact that they didn't do that on all these characters. There are so many characters. They're all unique. So much time and attention. Actually, I'm not sure. I think there probably are some repeats. Yeah, I'm looking now. There are some repeats. But still, 
Why, 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 Egerspiel? You, you put the text in on here. It's not important. It's not necessary. You don't have to translate um, Barbados into, um, you know, what, whatever the French version of Barbados is, if you ever put the, a friend out of French word. You don't have to. You just leave him alone. They could have done the same thing to say that, oh, you know, he's a, he's a priest and, you know, he's the archbishop and she's a countess and, you know, and he's an accountant and she... I mean, just a little bit extra to make these characters feel alive, to, to kind of offer offset the fact that, like most Euros, this is an economic simulation where you are a disembodied a middle management guy trying to move money around from one place to another. That's what you do in this game. Um, you know, it is a fairly dry experience, but it could definitely be more thematic if you said, oh man, I really had to pay through the nose to get that countess. Oh, but she's worth it. Ah, oh. you know, I mean, it's so simple. Giving something a name immediately gives them a personification in your imagination, gives you something to lock on so it feels more real, it feels more connected. It's a dumb little oversight, but it drives me nuts in a game that pretty much just knocks everything else out of the park, just hits just every single beat it's trying to hit perfectly. That's Coimbra, folks, and that is the run-through. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye. Uh,